Claire McCaskill is a former United States Senator who lost her election in 2018 and almost immediately after she lost her election, she was hired by MSNBC to explain how Democrats can be successful in their elections. Let me repeat that. Someone who lost their election is now giving advice to Democrats on how to win elections. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but regardless, she is an analyst for MSNBC, and she's going to explain to us why she believes Joe Biden didn't perform as well in key swing states as he was expected to. Take a look. It's hard to pinpoint. I think it began uh, around cultural issues. The Republican Party, I think, very uh, adroitly adopted cultural issues as part of their main theme, whether you're talking guns or issues surrounding the right to abortion in this country, or things like gay marriage and the right for transsexuals and, and other people who we as a party have tried to quote unquote, look after and make sure that they're treated fairly. As we you know, circled those issues, we left some voters behind and Republicans dove in with a vengeance and grabbed those voters. And you've seen this shift. You saw it in the South, I've seen it in the rural areas of my state. Uh, so we've got to get back to the meat and potatoes issues. We've got to get back to the issues where we are taking care of their families. And we also need to quit acting like we're smarter than everybody else, because we're not. So first of all, big yikes on her referring to trans people as transsexuals. Um, second of all, if she were saying, look, Democrats can't just remain hyper-focused on cultural issues and exclusively focused on identity politics, and they should also broaden their economic message, I would say... Sure, I agree with that, right? Of course, you need to have good social policy, but also sound economic policy that will materially materially improve people's lives. No disagreement if that were the case. But that's not necessarily what she's saying. Basically, what she's saying is Democrats need to be more racist. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mike, come on, you are being way, way too cynical here. You should interpret what she's saying more charitably. But, um... No, <laughs> because we've seen what she thinks is a winning strategy back in 2018. When she was up in a tough re-election race against Josh Hawley, at the last minute, we know exactly what her strategy was. It wasn't to offer people sound economic policy, material benefits. She got more racist. I voted for over 70% of President Trump's judicial nominees. 70%. I voted for more than half of his cabinet members. I vote with him half the time. He signed 38 of my bills into law. That doesn't sound like, to me, somebody who is knee-jerk. Some of my colleagues are knee-jerk against the president. I don't get up every day figuring out how to fight the president. I get up every day trying to figure out how I can fight for Missourians. To that point, you have this radio ad out now that says, at one point in an exchange, she's not one of these crazy Democrats. Claire's not afraid to stand up against her own party. Yep, and Claire's not one of those crazy Democrats. Who's the crazy Democrat? The crazy Democrats are people who walk in restaurants and scream in elected officials' faces. The crazy Democrats are, we have a state senator here in Missouri that actually advocated for the assassination of President Trump. That's a crazy Democrat. Um, I don't do those things. I am not somebody who thinks that we should ever be uncivil. I think what most Missourians want is for us to listen to each other, figure out where we can compromise, not scream in each other's faces, not call each other names. So I'm really talking about um, civility here. I'm talking about being polite, having good manners. Well, just to be clear, there's not another crazy Democrat in the Senate. Well, I would say this. I would not call my colleagues crazy, but Elizabeth Warren sure went after me when I advocated tooling back some of the regulations for small banks and, and credit unions. Um, I certainly disagree with Bernie Sanders on a bunch of stuff. Um, so this caravan is getting a lot of attention. It's stop coming. at the border. And what do you do? When they get to the border, what do you do? The, I think the president has to use every tool he has at his disposal, and I'm 100% back him up on that. Big yikes. Now, she's not talking about broadening their economic message. She's talking about embracing identity politics, albeit the white identity politics that we see championed relentlessly by the Republican Party. 
So when she talks now about how Democrats can't just be hyper-focused on identity politics and cultural issues, they need, you know, to appeal to people, let them know how to put food on the table. Right, but you didn't do that. So, of course, when she says this, we have no choice. We have to interpret this as her saying Democrats should probably be a little bit more racist because that's what she did. And guess what? That was a losing strategy. Now, maybe I am being a little bit too cynical, too unfair to her. And maybe she realizes that her 2018 strategy was a failure and that you really do need to be more progressive. Let people know that you're going to help them put food on the table. Strengthen our social safety net. Offer people Medicare for all, a $15 an hour minimum wage. But that's not the case because she has been unequivocally against leftist policy ideas that are very popular, even in places like the Rust Belt. I mean, Joe Biden, he lost the Sun Belt. He lost Florida. But yet a $15 an hour minimum wage was approved via ballot initiative. You have to put two and two together. It's not that difficult, folks. It, it's, it's common sense. But yet they don't get it. And they don't want to be more leftist. It's easier for Democrats to move to the right because that won't offend their corporate donors. So that's what she did. So her advice to Democrats uh, after she lost by trying this is uh, be more racist. <laughs> I mean, look, you can say I'm being too unfair. That's fine. But uh, again, I think that her actions speak louder than her words. Now, I love this because AOC took to Twitter to call her out for this saying, why do we listen to people who lost elections as if they are experts in winning elections? McCaskill tried her approach. She ran as a caravan hysteria Democrat and lost while grassroots organizers won progressive measures in Missouri. Her language here shows how she took her base for granted. And that is exactly it. Why are Democrats listening to people who lost? How often have we seen James Carville on MSNBC after this imbecile wrote a book titled something to the effect of why Democrats are going to rule the nation for the next 40 years? These people had their heads so far up their own asses, they can't see the light of day. So why are we listening to them? Why are we taking electoral advice from Claire McCaskill, a loser? It's just, it's so infuriating. Now, Claire McCaskill actually issued an apology for what she said, um, but not for everything. She tweeted out, I'm so sorry I used hurtful term last night. I was tired, but never a good excuse. People have misinterpreted what I was trying to say. Our party should never leave behind our fight for equality for trans people or anyone else who has been marginalized by hate. My record reflects that. Okay, so you can say, Mike, that's proof right there that you were being a little bit too unfair to her. Okay, fine. She's saying now, I, uh, I believe in the fight for equality. But then she says, my record reflects that. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't at all. No, you're wrong about that. Quote, stop them at the border. Stop them at the border. That's what you said in response to a Fox News host asking you where you stand on this migrant caravan coming here, seeking asylum because our government's policies destroyed Latin America. Stop them at the border. So no, your record does not reflect that. If anything, your record shows the opposite of that. So I mean, after you lose your election, in a humiliating way after she did when she shifted to the far right, literally, you should be permanently discredited. Nobody should want to bring you on to hear from you ever again about politics and especially how to win an election. But here we are where she is hired as a political analyst for MSNBC to give Democrats bad advice after she lost. I mean, I shouldn't have to say this, but this is a pretty bad idea.